Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel here. My name is Scott and what I want to bring to you today are idioms. Idioms, idioms, idioms. They're very useful, good for building up your vocabulary, your idiom usage, your conversational skills, and improving your overall English fluency. That's what we strive for here. Now the idioms I, I have for you today are not just idioms, uh, there are thousands of them, but uh, I'm using idioms today that are, are musical idioms. And what I mean is that these idioms are using instruments or things related to music, um, tunes, songs, etc. That's what I want to focus on today with my idioms. So the first uh, for me here is uh, two idioms with the word fiddle. Now a fiddle itself is a, uh, is a, well, kind of a rough word for a violin. So a fiddle is a violin, but it's a much more casual word uh, used. Now the first one is the fiddle with, fiddle with something. And to fiddle with something means to, to kind of toy around with it, play around with it, um, using your hands or so. Maybe you're trying to fix it or you're trying to uh, use it somehow. So if you're fiddling around with it, that means you're using it um, maybe in an, well, in an inappropriate way or just for fun, but to fiddle with something. So, for example, uh, the remote control uh, was broken, so I fiddled around with it to see if I can get it fixed. That's to fiddle around with it, uh, using your hands and trying to experiment with it. Now, my second one for fiddle is uh, to play second fiddle. Now, if you're familiar with an orchestra, you have a first chair and a second chair, a third chair. So, um, of course, the, the violin or the, the clarinet is first chair, second chair. First chair would be maybe the, the, you know, the most talented musician. Uh, so second fiddle in that case is not the first chair, but the second chair. So to play second fiddle is the idea that you're not number one, and maybe you don't want to be second fiddle in that regard. So to play second fiddle means to be number two, and most likely you do not want to be in that position. So as an example, uh, you like him more than, talking to a you know, girl in this case, you like him more than me, well I don't want to play second fiddle. So it's over or finished in that regard. So to play second fiddle, to be number two. Okay, that's the, the two I have for fiddle. Now another good is to change one's tune. Uh, change your tune, change his tune, change her tune. If you change your tune, you suddenly uh, change your opinion or mindset or something you were planning to do. So to change your tune. So you had this one idea and you kind of stayed with that and then you suddenly change to a different idea where well, you change your tune. Tune there, of course, means a song and music. So to change your tune means to make a sudden change on something. Let me give you an example. So I, he was determined to go to graduate school, but he changed his tune and decided to find work instead and to change one's tune. Okay. Uh, next up is to face the music. This idea here is something that's not easy. Now, if you have to face something, you come, you know, face to face, you confront it. To face the music means to maybe to uh, face a situation uh, that may not be pleasant. It does not necessarily, this is not a, a positive meaning or a good meaning. So to face the music is to confront something that you should, you have to do. Maybe you don't want to, maybe you're reluctant to, but you have to face the music. I'll give you an example here as well. So after making so many mistakes, you know, at his company, he had to face the music and talk to the boss and tell him why these mistakes were made and face the music. Not the positive situation, but a very good uh, idiom all the same. Uh, next one is to ring a bell. Uh, ring a bell, you have a bell, you hit it, that rings it, alarm clock or so, that's a, that's a ring. So ring a bell. Uh, ring a bell is to recall or remember something. So, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. Um, um, that name rings a bell. I've heard that name somewhere before. I can't recall now, but that, that name rings a bell. Hopefully I remember more later, but to ring a bell means you do recall something about it. Doesn't ring a bell, and you have no idea on it. That name doesn't ring a bell. I don't know if I've ever heard that name before. Who exactly is that? So to ring a bell or not ring a bell. Uh, next up is to blow one's horn. Blow your horn, blow his horn, blow her horn. What this means is to speak proudly of yourself. Talk about yourself. Maybe make yourself bigger than you really are. 
So an example here is uh, he's always blowing his horn about the accomplishments he has. That's to blow his horn. Talk proudly about yourself. That also, it's not a compliment. So if you say to somebody, he's always blowing his horn, that's not necessarily a compliment. He is speaking a little bit too proudly about himself. So blow one's horn is a good idiom there as well. Uh, the next one is to jump on the bandwagon. Jump on the bandwagon I have. Jump on the bandwagon. So you have a wagon with wheels. It's moving down the street. There's a band on it and the band is playing. People are running after it. It sounds great. It's a little bit old fashioned going back to the 19th century. And the bandwagon may be popular. So if you jump on the bandwagon, you're also you know, participating or taking part in or, or contributing to or uh, making the, taking advantage of the popular situation. So to jump on the bandwagon. In that regard, it's not necessarily negative, but to jump on the bandwagon means to stay on the positive, popular side of something, to jump on the bandwagon. Um, if, I, if I give you an example here, now he was not a baseball fan at all, um, but he jumped on the Otani bandwagon, suddenly got started wearing uh, Otani uh, jerseys and uh, watching the uh, Angels games when they were playing in California. So that's a jump on the bandwagon. They, to take advantage of or to get on to the popular thing at that time. Uh, the next one is um, going to a choir, like a church choir. Now, often in churches, the young children sing, and often boys are called a choir boy, okay? I usually a choir boy, maybe somebody that's innocent and kind and nice and really no guilt or bad things about that person. So being a choir boy means that this person is pure and innocent. So if somebody, you say to somebody that, or refer to somebody as uh, he's no choir boy, that means he's no angel. He's not a perfect person. He's done some bad things uh, maybe in his past. So no choir boy means that person is not as good as you think that person is. So he's not a terrible person, but he's no choir boy as well. So we're re re uh, using that in that uh, regard. So no choir boy. That's not going to be an everyday typing idiom, but it's, I thought it was clever, so I put it in here. No choir boy. Okay, everybody, those are the idioms, musical idioms that I want to cover today. I hope you're good with them and uh, can use them in your everyday English life. Just one more thing before I finish here today, and it's about uh, sing a song. Now, for some reason in Japan, it got popular to put them together, sing a song. What do you like to do? I like to sing a song. What do you like to do in your free time? I like to sing a song. That means you're on song, you're finished. So there's no more songs after that, it sounds like. So sing a song, just cut off a song. I like to sing, just that verb only is enough. You do not, you do not, do not need to put on a song after that. So what do you like to do on weekends? I like to sing. Good. What do you like to do on weekends? I like to sing a song. It sounds kind of funny. You only got one song, you're finished. What else do you do after that? So just stay with sing. Okay, everybody, that's a little extra there. Not necessarily an idiom but practical English, I believe. Okay, everyone, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, requests, uh, please do leave them below and uh, push on the like and subscribe if you would. That would be great. Until then, everybody, keep up the great work. Good luck with the idioms and everything else that you do to improve your English. And I'll see you here again soon. Thanks for watching.